Well, how do the people in the view of us? Does I, Captain Stephen, I've got myself a mug of freaking tea, mate. Heck yes, I have. So, yeah, it's time for a little bit of a chat, a little bit of a chin wag, and today it's going to be about No Man's Sky. And this one's going to be quite a short one today, people in the view of us, because it's it's what I say to people that ask me what I'm up to. You know, so if I haven't seen a friend for freaking ages or an old person from college or school or whatever, well, you're right there, Steve. So what are you up to as of late? And I tell them about my everyday day job, but the real juicy stuff is when I say I'm a YouTube content creator. Heck yes, I am. Brilliant, eh? They're like, really? Okay, well, what do you do? What's your channel? Oh, well, I cover sort of, you know, open worldy sort of games, um, but I started off my channel on No Man's Sky. And they're like, oh, I've heard of that. That had a really rocky launch, didn't it? And I'm like, Yes, yes, it did have a rocky launch, but it's it's immensely different from that rocky launch. If you haven't seen it, you ought to check it out. It's pretty cool. It's a procedurally generated universe with a quintillion planets to land on and explore. Really? It's got that many planets, has it, Steve? Heck, yes, it has, mate. Yes, yes, it's got loads and loads of those planets. Yes, the only thing is, yeah, okay, it's got a quintillion planets, but it's got probably about 80 biomes. So, yeah, and mixtures that you can do with that. So sometimes you might land on a gamma world and it might be a yellow tinge, but then you land on another gamma world and it's an orange tinge. Um, so, yeah, although there's like, you know, a quintillion planets, there are 80 odd biomes. So, yeah, you are going to see patterns after a while. Okay, um, so doesn't that get a little bit boring and repetitive then, in, in a roundabout way? Well, yeah, some, sometimes sometimes it does. Yeah, sometimes it, it does get a little bit repetitive and a little bit annoying, a little bit boring. But it, at the same time, you can put down bases on these planets and stuff, and you can create all sorts of weirdness when it comes to bases. You can... Big Robot Dragons is what I like making, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, you, you've kind of tried to find a planet that you really like, that you want to call home, and then you place a base on it. And, uh, yeah, you sort of settle there for a while, maybe have a few community events, people come over, see your base all that sort of stuff so yeah so what's the actual aim of the game then Stephen? well you get to the center of the game you get to the center of the game and you've got to follow like this atlas it's like this big structure in space you can actually fly into it and you talk to this sort of giant monolithy type thing inside there and it sort of lets you know that you're part of the simulation yeah, and um, yeah, so you've got to get to, to all these atlas points, and then you slowly get to the center of the universe. Uh, the center of the universe, you say. This is getting interesting. Okay, so what happens when you get to the center of the universe? Well, I, don't, I don't know whether I should spoil it for you, um, but at the same time, it, you know, it takes you a good 30, 40 hours to get there, and there's all different side stories and side arcs to find out that you're in this simulation, but then. At the end of it, when you get to the center, you sort of reset the simulation. And then you go right back to the start and then do it all again. And there's 256 galaxies. So you can do that 256 times or whatever. Actually, I think they've reduced it now to 254. But you get the idea. And all these galaxies are different. Yeah, there's reason to go through all of these galaxies and do it over and over again. Is that, Steve? No. No, <laughs> that is not. So so people tend to just stay in the first galaxy because they know this. So yeah, Euclid is one of the most popular. And there's also galaxy number 10, which has got a higher chance of spawning in lush planets that are more Earth-like, which are really quite cool. Um, so yeah, there's there's that. But yeah, a lot of people, they, they sort of settle down, build bases now. It, it's, it, I mean, a lot of people do the actual story, but at least once. But then uh, other than that, I don't, I don't think anybody is going to be hard pushed to do all 254 of them. But there are people that have. So there is that too. It's, it's what you want to make of it. You see, it's quite a sandboxy experience. You can go out, you can do missions, and you can earn Quicksilver, and you can get all different rewards and customizations that people can see in multiplayer, when multiplayer is working, that is, and when it's working well. Um, so yeah, it's it's been out for six years, and it, it's still sort of like a sandboxy type experience, and it's still in development. We get updates every three months. We do. It's it's quite cool. One of the latest updates we got, they brought in new Sentinels, which are like these space police that get angry if you build and nick resources from their planets and stuff, which is quite cool. You have to shoot them out of the sky and things, and then big walkers turn up like um, freaking Atats out of no, not Atats the the a oh, the Scout Walkers as well I call them. They've got a real name. Yeah, 
You mean those chicken leg type robots that the Ewoks trip over with freaking skipping ropes? Yeah, they're, they're the ones. Yeah, yeah. They look a bit like that. They look a bit like that. All right, okay. Um, so you've plowed how many hours into this game now, Steve? Oh, over a, fa a thousand hours? Over a thousand hours, yeah. Um, and yeah, I do lots of YouTube videos on them. I also do other bits and bobs on my YouTube channel, a bit of vlogs and, you know, all sorts of other stuff. I've done one on how to make a decent cup of English tea, mate. Yeah, that's on there. Lovely. Well, okay, well, I'll be sure to check out your channel, but um, that No Man's Sky, it, it doesn't sound like it's my cup of tea, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I might I might give it a look after I've looked looked at your channel. Yeah, um, yeah, that sounds sounds interesting, but it sounds like it's still in beta phase or something. Yeah, it kind of it kind of feels that way sometimes playing it. It does feel like we're doing a lot of bug testing, sending those into Hello Games as well. That's the maker of the game, and they're actually, they listen to the community. So, it, like I say, there's updates every three to four months, and sometimes you see those suggestions come into game. So it actually feels like the community is driving the actual you know the the build of the actual game, which is really cool. And I love that bit. I also like to speculate on what might be coming in the next update because the updates are so regular. There's not many other game developers that actually put out stuff you know every three months for free as well you don't get charged for these updates well i should hope not to be honest it sounds like the game is like you say is still in development it's still a little bit of a buggy experience and it doesn't sound like it's overly delivering on that procedural generated exploration experience that was sold i mean i remember seeing trailers of these big majestic diplos in watering holes and rhinos smashing down trees and i'm sure i saw a sandworm on a dune-like planet is any of that inside of the game captain steve mm, six years in we have got worm creatures they but they they jump out of the ground and they jump over you and you can't do combat with them and they don't harm you. They don't kill you or anything like that. They just ignore you. They're just there as a surf flip. Yeah, They're just there as like a, an imagey type thing. It's all, sometimes it, when you try to fly into them, you go straight through them as well. Um, so they're, they're all, it's almost like a particle emitter. It's a little bit of fluff, to be honest. But yeah, we've got those giant worms. They are there. And the rhinos that smash down trees, and they don't smash down trees, but there are large rhino creatures, but they're, they're very rarely aggressive. In, not very scary, to be honest. And um, as for the Diplos, we have got Diplos, but they're not as majestic. They don't animate like you saw in the uh, the uh, trailer there. They just... Bzz, bzz. They're more like cranes <laughs> than Diplos. They definitely don't wade into the water like in that water and the whole thing. That, was, that, was, that whole trailer was based on some concept art that one of the guys did inside of that studio. So it was just there as like, it was pigeonholed in. This is what the game might be like. That, that's, that, that trailer it wasn't a gameplay trailer. Are you sure? I'm fairly sure I saw it at E3, and I, I remember it saying across the bottom, gameplay trailer, and I, I'm surprised that sort of stuff isn't in there then, because that's what I remember. That's what I remember from No Man's Sky, and then the rocky launch. I remember seeing people on day one with creatures upside down sort of twirling around on the ground and stuff. And I did watch Angry Dro Joe's review about how it you have to just grind to fuel something, then take off and fuel something, and take off and fuel something. And he goes, you got an F, did up, you know, like he always does. And, and, and then I just didn't bother buying the game. So if you had to sell me the game, Captain Steve, what, what would you say is its main selling points then? The main selling points for uh, No Man's Sky is pretty much the community. Um, the actual people that play it are freaking awesome people. They're super geeks, like, you know, like you and I. You know, I I've grown up watching Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica and all that sort of shenanigans. And to be fair, this game is probably the closest you're going to get to experiencing that. And because it is so sandboxy, you can kind of make it your own. As long as you've got a bit of imagination to throw into it, it's it's actually really quite good. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's, it is, it is like you just said, it's more of a sandboxy type of experience. But yeah, that, that E3 trailer, sadly, we're still waiting for some of those elements to come in. It's like if, if you saw that other one, the follow-up one, where Sean was on stage. Sean Murray, the maker of the game. 
Um, yeah, so if you saw that one when he was on stage, he says about, you know, when you come across a freighter interaction and a battle, you can pick your side. At the moment, that that's still not a thing, and we're like six years in, and that was one of the major things that grabbed me too, is being able to pick a side in, in a battle. Because it's all right having a procedurally generated universe, but if you haven't got those things to do inside of the universe and things to actually pick up on, and then it, it feels a bit hollow. And to be honest, it, it still does to a, to a degree, but... <sighs> The community has created factions that you can go and join and you can sort of role play it out with those sort of communities online. So yeah, it's, it's very much a community driven experience and you have to embed yourself into that community and join those sort of online factions like the, you know, I've got my own hub, the Anima Say 905 hub. So I've claimed an area of space and people come there, sometimes do events and give away like eggs for pets because yeah, that's another thing, you can tame creatures on planets now and ride them around. Yeah, that, that that too. So there's, there's all sorts that's been brought into the game. I could talk, I could talk about it for freaking ages. But you know what? You're best just to pick up a cheap copy inside of a second-hand freaking game shop like CEX or whatever, because you can get it for like under fifteen quid. And even if you play it for the story, which is like forty hours, you've got your money's worth. Give it a try, because I'm not very good at selling things. I know it's your sort of cup of tea, because you like the stuff I like, and if I like it, there's a good chance you're gonna like it. So. Give it a try rather than just hearing me out. That's all well and good, Steve, but you know what? There's so many games. I've got so many. Even so, I've, I, you know, I'm on Xbox, so I've got Game Pass, and I've got freaking oodles of games to play. You know what? I'd have a look to see if it's on Game Pass. It says, if it's on Game Pass, I would check it out, Captain Steve. I'd be sure to check it out and let you know how I get on with it. Okay? Well, yeah. Nice one. That, that sounds good. Yeah, I think it is on Game Pass. Yeah, give it a try and give us a tinkle. Let, give us a ring and let us know how you got on with it. Yeah? Cool, yeah. Ding, ding, ling, ling. Bing, ling, ling. Buggle, log, log, buggle, log. Hello! Hello! You alright there, buddy? Yeah, I tried that No Man's Sky game that you said. Yeah, I, I booted it up in normal mode, mate. And, um, yeah. Freaking tutorial shite. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't find my ship because I. I kept dying because I couldn't top up my hazard protection. It said something about needing um, sodium or whatever, and it didn't really tell me where I get the sodium from. And yeah, my scanner was broken, and it said I needed some dust stuff, some sort of ferrite or ferret or something. I don't know. But yeah, I just couldn't get. I couldn't get to grips with it. I couldn't find my ship. Couldn't take off, and I got bored within like the first 10 minutes, and I, I gave up with it because I died like three times. Um, well, the ferrite dust you get from shooting rocks with your mining laser, and then you need to find the yellow plants. The yellow plants top up your hazard protection, and then hopefully you're going to find your ship, and then it's pretty much handheldy from there. But the tutorial steps are in the bottom right-hand corner. They pop up, and um, yeah, you just need to read them, and uh, you, you progress. Well, that's all well and good, but I was reading, I was trying to read that. At the same time, I've got these bars flashing at me, and I've got the voices sounding off saying, Hazard protection is low, you're going to die. It's imminent any second now, you're going to die. And I, it was just panic-stricken. I thought this game was supposed to be relaxing. Um, Yeah, it, it is. It's a very relaxing, chilled game. After you get past that bit. Um, if you find it difficult though, you can go into settings and change the difficulty setting to creative mode and then you're not going to die and you can just do whatever you like. Well, I did buy it for the survival element. I, 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 I don't really want to sort of cheat myself out of that experience, but at the same time, the tutorial was that shite. And it, it's just not for me. I mean, if the tutorial was that shite, then the rest of the game is going to be shite, isn't it? No, <laughs> it's really not. Um, but you know, I I don't want to sort of twist your arm into this and to get you to get you to play something that you you're not going to enjoy. Uh, I guess it's um, when I played it, the tutorial was different. When I first picked up No Man's Sky, you started at your ship, and uh, you know you you knew where it was, and you had to go collect resources, bring it back to your ship, and fix it. And there was the hazard protection didn't start that low, and but they've changed all that. That's all been changed. Um. For better, for worse, but by the sounds of it, it's probably for worse because I get this quite a lot. Uh, I've actually bought No Man's Sky for a few of my friends and they've said exactly the same thing that you said. I actually made a video called How Not to Die in No Man's Sky. Hit it up on YouTube, give that a watch, and if you can be asked to pick it up again, pick it up after watching that and hopefully you're not going to die in No Man's Sky. 
Thank you. People, I've had that conversation probably, what, uh, quite a fair few times now with friends of mine um, outside in the real world. And it seems to be the concurrent theme that I hear across when I, I talk to other people that are massive fans. It's like when I went to the Guildford meetup and I'm talking to people there. Some people echoed the same sort of sentiments that No Man's Sky is shifting, it's changing, it's very hard to get new players into it. But then saying that, you know, there are new players jumping in all the time. And it, I guess it just depends whether they actually get past that tutorial step and whether they actually enjoy jumping from planet to planet. I mean, I got into this mainly for the exploration side, but I'd say the exploration side of No Man's Sky, it's its had some love in the next update, and it had some love inside of the Origins update and Prisms, and a few others that have brought a little bit like Visions and stuff has, has added a little into the exploration experience, but they've also taken away at the same time. It's like when we first started out in No Man's Sky, um, not every planet had fauna, but now they do. Um, a lot of planets were quite barren, but that added to the enjoyment of when you did find a planet that had really interesting creatures in. But when I say really interesting creatures, when you look at the actual roster of creatures, there's probably only, what, maybe six creatures out of the whole roster. And when I say six creatures, six creature types. Like, you've got the bipedal guys. You know, guys, move around like that. That's pretty cool. The diplos. Some people really like the diplos. You've got the beetles, which are quite cool that you can fly on. Other sorts of flying fauna, which I'm just going to group together into a bundle, be that giant freaking wormy ones or the butterfly type ones or whatever. You know, they're quite interesting. And then you've got the really obscure oddities, like the rolly balls with eyes all over them and things, which are quite cool. People usually have them as pets. And maybe the odd strider, maybe the odd strider, or a really cute crab or something. But it's very rare that you come across something other than those sort of spectrums that you go, oh, wow, that's cool. You know, there's no giant freaking rhinos that smash trees, for example. And yes, there are those battle cats, but they all look pretty much the same, the battle cats. Even when you put them in an appearance modifier, you can't change their color or anything, can you? No, so, I don't know. I just feel that the variety of No Man's Sky and the exploration sort of side of No Man's Sky needs a massive great big lift to bring it on par at least with the base building sort of side of things. Because the game has shifted massively in its poles. It's it's not really that sort of exploration experience now. Not, not so much in the way of getting to the centre of the universe or progressing. I really do feel the gameplay loop needs massive adjustment. I also feel that the start of the game, the actual tutorial, needs a massive adjustment. I think rather than put you miles away from your ship, they should stick you straight next to your freaking ship again. And then at least you've got somewhere to duck and cover to get your hazard protection back. But it can still tell you about the hazardous flora. I mean, not the hazardous flora, the, the hazard protection flora, the little freaking sodium plants. But it needs to show a bigger freaking picture of that thing. This is what you're bloody looking for. All right? Because the amount of people that I, I know that have given up because they couldn't find how to top up the hazard protection and died and couldn't find their ship because they couldn't fix their scanner and died um, is a little bit freaking crazy, to be honest. So, And also the tutorial steps, it could be... A little bit more love going into there, maybe bring up more images and actually voice over it, even if it is with the AI, you know, a little bit more voice. Over. Because some people, they're, they're panicking because their bar's flashing. They've got that AI voice telling them that they're bloody dying and they're not reading the full message. They're glancing at it, skipping it to try and go and do whatever they think they need to do rather than reading what they need to do and staying calm. Because it's hard to stay calm when you've got bars flashing at you, voices going off. The last thing you want to do is stand there and read something, you know? So it needs to happen while you're doing it. You need to be told what you're doing as you're doing it. And if it does come up with a tutorial step, it needs to pause the interaction so you know you've got time to read it without that bar going down and you dying. I don't know. It just needs a bit of a rework at the start to hook people and bring them in. It's a relaxing experience game, so why hit them with a whole load of stress and freaking frustration in the first 10 minutes? It makes no sense to me whatsoever, people. What you experience at the start should be what you're experiencing all the way through to give you an idea of what to experience. If your first 10 minutes of the game is frustration and stress, you're going to think uh, that's the whole game, okay? Anyway, um, yeah, so that's that's the conversations that I have with friends. This is a conversation I've just had with you guys now in the view of us. Let us know in the comments if you've had very similar sorts of sort of interactions with people, because, yeah, I know I have. Anyway, I'm going to have another sip of this. Freaking lovely. 
Anyway, people in the view of us, I'm going to end off now. I did say I was going to keep this one quite short. How long have I been blinking rabbiting on for? 20 minutes! Alright, sorry people, I'm taking too much of your time. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.